The chair she sat in, like a burnished throne, glowed on the marble, where the glass held up by standards, wrought with fruited vines from which a golden cupidon peeped out. Another hid his eyes behind his wing, doubled the flames of seven branched candelabra, reflecting light upon the table as the glitter of her jewels rose to meet it from satin cases poured in rich profusion. In vials of ivory and colored glass unstoppered lurked her strange synthetic perfumes, unguent, powdered or liquid, troubled, confused, and drowned the scents in odors stirred by the air that freshened from the window. These ascended in fattening the prolonged candle flames, flung the smoke into the laqueria, stirring the pattern on the coffered ceiling. Huge seawood, fed with copper, burned green and orange, framed by the colored stone in which, sad light, a carved dolphin swam. Above the antique mantel was displayed, as though a window gave upon the sylvan scene, the change of Philomel by the barbarous king, so rudely forced, Yet there the nightingale filled all the desert with inviolable voice, and still she cried, and still the world pursues. Jug, jug, to dirty ears, and other withered stumps of time were told upon the walls. Staring forms leaned out, leaning, hushing the room enclosed. Footsteps shuffled on the stair. Under the firelight, under the brush, her hair spread out in fiery points, glowed into words, then would be savagely still. My nerves are bad tonight. Yes, bad. Stay with me. Speak to me. Why do you never speak? Speak! What are you thinking of? What? Thinking? What? I never know what you are thinking. Think! I think we are in Rat's Alley, where the dead men lost their bones. What is that noise? The wind under the door. What is that noise now? What is the wind doing? Nothing. Again, nothing. <laughs> Do you know nothing? Do you see nothing? Do you remember nothing? I remember. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Are you alive or not? Is there nothing in your head but oh? Oh, 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 that Shakespearean rag. It's so elegant, so intelligent. What shall I do now? What shall I do? I shall rush out as I am and walk the streets with my hair down. So what shall we do tomorrow? What shall we ever do? The hot water at ten, and if it rains, a closed car at four, and we shall play a game of chess, pressing lidless eyes and waiting for a knock upon the door. When Lil's husband got demobbed, I said, I didn't mince my words, I said to her myself, hurry up, please, it's time. Now, Albert's coming back. Make yourself a bit smart. He'll want to know what you done with that money he gave you to get yourself some teeth. He did, I was there. You have him all out, Lil, and get a nice set, he said. I swear I can't bear to look at you. And no more can't I, I said, and think of poor Albert. He's been in the army four years. He wants a good time, and if you don't give it him, there's others, will I, said. Oh, is there, she said. Something of that, I said. Then I'll know to thank, she said. Give me a straight look. Hurry up, please. It's time. If 
you don't like it, you can get on with it, I said. Others can pick and choose if you can't. But if Albert makes off, it won't be for lack of telling. You ought to be ashamed, I said, to look so antique. And her only 31. I can't help it, she said, pulling a long face. It's them pills I took to bring it up, she said. She said five already. I nearly died of young George. The chemist said it'd be all right, but I've never been the same. You are a proper fool, I said. Well... If Albert won't leave you alone, there it is, I said. What'd you get married for if you don't want children? Hurry up, please, it's time! Well, that Sunday, Albert was home. They had a hot gammon, and they asked me into dinner to get the beauty of it hot. Hurry up, please, it's time! Hurry up, please, it's time! Oh, good night, Bill. Good night, Lou. Good night, May. Uh, good night. Ta-ta. Good night. Good night. Good night, ladies. Good night, sweet ladies. Good night. Good night. <laughs>